Hello everyone. So I found this article from the New York Times uh, focused on Norway. And it's interesting because Norway has already basically made the change to electric vehicles, well, at least in a big way so far. So it's an interesting case study to have a look at. So let's dive into the article. And after I'll make some comments on my thoughts. So here's the article headline is in Norway, the electric vehicle future has already arrived. About 80% of new cars sold in Norway are battery powered. As a result, the air is cleaner, the streets are quieter, and the grid hasn't collapsed. But problems with unreliable chargers persist. Bamble, Norway, about 110 miles south of Oslo, along a highway lined with pine and birch trees, a shiny fueling station offers a glimpse of a future where electric vehicles rule. Chargers far outnumber gasoline pumps at the service area operated by Circle K a retail chain that got its start in Texas. During summer weekends when Oslo residents flee to country cottages, the line to recharge sometimes backs up down the off-ramp. Merritt Bergsland, who works at the store, has had to learn how to help frustrated customers connect to chargers, in addition to her regular duties flipping burgers and ringing up purchases of salty licorice, a popular treat. Sometimes we have to give them a coffee to calm down, she said. Last year, 80% of new car sales in Norway were electric, putting the country at the vanguard of the shift to battery-powered mobility. It has also turned Norway into an observatory for figuring out what the electric vehicle revolution might mean for the environment, workers, and life in general. The country will end the sales of internal combustion engine cars in 2025. Wow, so in two years, Norway will no longer have uh, sales of internal combustion engine vehicles. Norway's experience suggests that electric vehicles bring benefits without the dire consequences predicted by some critics. There are problems, of course, including unreliable chargers and long waits during periods of high demand. Auto dealers and retailers have had to adapt. The switch has reordered the auto industry, making Tesla the best-selling brand and marginalizing established car makers like Renault and Fiat. Uh, harbinger of what's to come for worldwide markets, automotive markets. But the air in Oslo, Norway's capital, is measurably cleaner. The city is also quieter as noisier gasoline and diesel vehicles are scrapped. Oslo's greenhouse gas emissions have fallen 30% since 2009, yet there has not been mass unemployment among gas station workers and the electrical grid has not collapsed. Some lawmakers and corporate executives portray the fight against climate change as requiring grim sacrifice with EVs, it's not like that, said Christina Bu, Secretary General of the Norwegian EV Association, which represents owners. It's actually something that people embrace. Norway began promoting electric vehicles in the 90s to support Think, a homegrown electric vehicle startup that Ford Motor owned for a few years. Battery-powered vehicles were exempted from value-added and import taxes and from highway tolls. The government also subsidized the construction of fast charging stations, crucial in a country nearly as big as California with just 5.5 million people. The combination of incentives and ubiquitous charging took away all the friction factors, said Jim Rowan, the chief executive of Volvo Cars based in neighboring Sweden. The policies put Norway more than a decade ahead of the United States. The Biden administration aims for 50% of new vehicle sales to be electric by 2030 a milestone Norway passed in 2019. A few feet from a six-lane highway that skirts Oslo's waterfront, metal pipes jut from the roof of a prefabricated shed. The building measures pollution from the traffic zooming by, a stone's throw from a bicycle path and marina. Levels of nitrogen oxides, byproducts of burning gasoline and diesel that cause smog, asthma, and other ailments, have fallen sharply as electric vehicle ownership has risen. We are on the verge of solving the nitrous oxide problem, said Tobias Wolf, Oslo's chief engineer for air quality, referring to nitrous oxides, nitrogen oxides. But there is still a problem where the rubber meets the road. Oslo's air has unhealthy levels of microscopic particles generated partly by the abrasion of tires and asphalt. Electric vehicles, which account for about one-third of the registered vehicles in the city, 
but a higher proportion of traffic may even aggravate the pro that problem. Electric vehicles really are really a lot heavier than internal combustion engine cars, and that means that they are causing more abrasion, said Mr. Wolf, who, like many Oslo residents, prefers to get around by bicycle. Another persistent problem, apartment residents say finding a place to plug in their cars remains a challenge. In the basement of an Oslo restaurant recently, lawmakers and residents gathered to discuss the issue. Oslo is also targeting construction, the source of more than a quarter of its greenhouse gas emissions. Contractors bidding on public projects have a better chance of winning if they use equipment that runs on electricity or biofuels. At a park in a working class Oslo neighborhood last month, an excavator scooped out earth for a decorative pond. A thick cable connected the excavator to a power source, driving its electric motor. Later, an electric dump truck hauled away the soil. Normally, the crew would have been required to stop working when the children in a nearby kindergarten napped, but the electric equipment was quiet enough that work could continue. Children in Norway nap outdoors, weather permitting. That's interesting. <laughs> and here's a picture here of the electric backhoe. You see the cable there hooked up to a power source. And yeah, it would make living beside a construction site a little more uh, livable if it's all electric. No diesel emissions, uh, less noise. A lot of benefits there. Espen Haig, who manages city projects, said he was surprised at how quickly contractors substituted hard-to-find electric equipment for diesel machinery. Some projects that we thought were impossible are very difficult to do zero emission. We still got the tender for zero emission, he said. Elsewhere, Norway's power grid has held up fine even with more demand for electricity. It helps that the country has abundant hydropower, just like uh, a lot of places in Canada including Ontario and Quebec. Even so, electric vehicles have increased the demand for electric electricity modestly. According to calculations by the EV Association, and most, and most owners are charging cars at night when demand is lower and power is cheaper. Elvia, which supplies electricity to Oslo and the surrounding area, has had to install new substations and transformers in some places, said Anne Nace Ether the company's managing, managing director, but she added, we haven't seen any issue of the grid collapsing, nor has there been a rise in unemployment among auto mechanics. Electric vehicles don't need oil changes and require less maintenance than gasoline cars, but they still break down, and there are plenty of gasoline cars that will need maintenance for years. Sindra Dranberg, who has worked at a Volkswagen dealership in Oslo since the 80s, underwent training to service electric vehicle batteries. Was it difficult to make the switch? No, he said, as he replaced defective cells in a Volkswagen e-Golf. Electric vehicles are creating jobs in other industries. In Fredrikstad, 55 miles south of Oslo, a former, a former steel plant has become a battery recycling center. Workers, including some who worked at the steel plant, dismantle battery packs. A machine then shreds the packs to separate plastic, aluminum, and copper from a black mass that contains crucial ingredients such as lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, and graphite. The factory owned by Hydrovolt is the first of several that the company plans to build in Europe and the United States. So far, there is not much to recycle, but eventually recycled batteries could greatly reduce the need for mining. If we can take the active material that already is within the product and create new ones, then we can create a shortcut, said Peter. War Fort, the chief executive of Hydrovolt, a joint venture of the aluminum producer Norks Hydro and Northvolt, a battery maker. If anyone has to worry about their jobs, it's car dealers. The almost complete disappearance of gasoline and diesel vehicles from showrooms has reordered the industry. The Moller Mobility Group has long been Norway's biggest auto retailer, with sales last year of 3.7 billion in dealerships in Sweden and the Baltic countries. Moller's Oslo outlet is filled with electric Volkswagens like the ID4 and the ID Buzz. There are only a few internal combustion cars. Yet Tesla is greatly outselling Volkswagen in Norway, grabbing 30% of the market compared to 19% for Volkswagen and its Skoda and Audi brands, according to the Road Information Council. 
sales of electric cars from Chinese companies like BYD and Xpeng are also growing. If that pattern repeats itself elsewhere in Europe and in the United States, some established car makers might not survive. Yeah, I've been saying this for quite a while. Peter Hellman, the chief executive of Moller Mobility, predict, predicted that traditional brands would regain ground because customers trust them and they have extensive service networks. But clearly, he added, Tesla has shaken the industry. Circle K, which bought gas stations that had belonged to Norwegian government owned oil company is using the country to learn how to serve electric car owners in the United States and Europe. The chain now owned by Almentation Couchetard, a company based near Montreal, has more than 9,000 stores in North America. Guru Stordal, a Circle K executive, has the difficult task of developing charging infrastructure that works with dozens of vehicle brands, each with its own software. Electric vehicle owners tend to spend more time at Circle K because charging takes longer than filling a gasoline tank. That's good for food sales, but gasoline remains an important source of revenue. We do see it as an opportunity, Hakon Sturkstrad, Circle K's head of global e-mobility set of electric vehicles. But if we are not capable of grasping those opportunities, it quickly becomes a threat. So a pretty interesting article from the New York Times there. And yeah, I've heard, you know, these comments before of like, oh, well, what about the grid won't be able to handle it if we make this transition. But clearly Norway has shown that that's not the case the, with, all, with a lot of charging being at nighttime when the demand is low, it might actually make operating the grid a little easier for power producers. The article mentioned that they have a lot of hydropower, so maybe that's that's a benefit for areas that do have a lot of hydro power hydro power is where you dam a river and you get power from the water pushing a turbine it's a very constant source i would say of power and yeah interesting to note the the cleaner air that they're noticing and of course there's still issues uh, you know charging problems there's an opportunity there to for our entrepreneurs and companies in general to do the best they can making a good charging solution. I think Tesla's leading the way there. The Tesla superchargers, in my opinion, are the most reliable and easiest to use charging network that I have seen. It seems to be reflected in other people's reviews as well. And they mentioned, unfortunately, the tire wear leads to particulate pollution as well and with electric vehicles being heavier can actually increase the particulate uh, i have seen uh, companies developing tires that are specifically designed for electric vehicles that may help with this problem and i think over time electric vehicles will become lighter teslas are the lightest some of the lightest vehicles electric vehicles you can get because it only makes sense to try and make your car as light as possible because then it becomes more efficient. So I think as time goes on, they'll become lighter and maybe even one day become lighter on average than your average internal combustion engine vehicle. But yeah, I didn't know uh, Norway is gonna ban the internal combustion engine vehicles in 2025, the sale of new internal combustion engine vehicles in 2025. So that's that's pretty interesting, and Norway's going to be a pretty interesting test case to to follow as the years go by, as they seem very far ahead of any other country in the world. We do the world in general seems to be moving in that direction, but Norway is 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 far ahead, maybe seven to ten years ahead of the rest of the world. So we can kind of keep an eye on it to see what it might look like in our own country. So a pretty cool article. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. I, I went through most of it. I only skipped a, a, a couple sections there. So that's it for this morning. My name is Evan Bertrand. This is the Evergreen channel. Give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe by clicking on the wheel in the bottom right. And thanks for watching.